Thank you for joining us. Uh, C.J. Davis, the police chief of Memphis Police Department, is like uh, doing as much as a PR tour as she can to, you know, quell the unrest that is inevitable. Okay. This morning. So the officers were charged yesterday. Why is the video being released tonight? Are you worried that it's coming out on a Friday night? Well, um, there was much discussion about when uh, an appropriate time for the video to be released, George, and uh, not just the Memphis Police Department, but with city administration and other agencies in the area. We felt that Friday would be better. Uh, we're, we're taking into consideration the reaction of the community uh, that could potentially take place and ensuring that our schools, you know, are out. Um, most business folks would be on the way home on tomorrow. Did you have give any consideration at all to or not? Or this evening, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> Did you give any consideration at all to not yeah. releasing the video, given the concerns? Um, no, not at all. You know, as we continue to talk about transparency, and even though this is a very, very difficult video to watch, um, it was never a thought that we would not release this video. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it wasn't released too prematurely because we wanted to ensure that the DA's office, the TBI, and also uh, the FBI had an opportunity to cross some of the um, some of the hurdles that they had to in their investigation. And we're sort of at a point now that the DA has made his statements in reference to charges of these officers that this is a safe time for us to release the video. You say it's difficult to watch. What was your reaction when you first saw the video? Uh, in my 36 years, um, George, I, I would have to say I don't think I've ever been more horrified and, um, and disgusted, uh, um, sad, uh, but just, you know, uh, and, and to some degree confused. Confused? Yes. Why? Um, you know, when I say, yeah, when I say confused, um, just in the level of uh, aggression and response to what what had occurred in this traffic stop and it's still very unclear you know as to uh the the real reason for the stop in the first place i guess part of your confusion yeah cops surely they never do that um that's so weird cops never like uh, unjustifiably brutally beat someone who also dies in custody uh, after like a routine police uh, traffic stop, Fuck, I'm trying to remember the specific case, but like if you're a cop for 30 years, you've already fucking seen it. Oh, yep. Sandra Bland. That's it. There you go. Cops never do that, dude. That's so weird. Cops never escalate. Cops never, ever escalate to violence unnecessarily, you know? So it's just such a confusing process. Huh. Famously so. Cops don't do stuff like that. No, the video hasn't come out yet. They're releasing it in, a, in like an hour or so, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Philando Castile, another example. You know, classic. Confusion must be rooted in the fact that your department did enact new policies in the wake of George Floyd's murders. What went wrong here? Well, I think that there were there were several gaps um, that took place, and I'm just going to to be honest. Anytime we have officers that are working in various types of units, and our police department, along with departments around the country, have specialized units, it's just important to make sure that there are supervisors that are where they're supposed to be during these um, types of uh, operations. And, um, you know, individuals that, that are the right people that are in place that will act appropriately um, when, when these types of uh, incidents occur. Uh, I believe there was um, a, a sense of groupthink um, in, in, in the mentality of, of what was happening. And um, it's just uh, very unfortunate that nobody stepped forward to say enough. You think it's possible that the initial stopping of the car was improper? 
As, as far as I know today, um, I do believe that um, the, the stop itself was very questionable. Uh, we have been a, unable to uh, verify uh, the reckless driving uh, allegation. Uh, there have been uh, many searches of video footage, you know, along the corridors of the street. Well, I'm not going to, um, I'm not lying when I say this. They, they let him out the dry. I've never fucking seen that DWB driving while black. I've never, cops don't need a fucking serious probable cause to stop someone. Come the fuck on. And every cop has been in a situation where they've defended other cops to be like, oh yeah, no, of course there was probable cause. The fact that they're not even saying that is genuinely shocking. It shows that like, you know, they're just, they're, they're making an example of these dudes. It's that this stop supposedly um, occurred or that the witnessing of reckless driving occurred. And we haven't been able to substantiate in any type of vi uh, video that um, there was a reckless driving um, type of action that prompted this stop. Did any of the police officers involved have prior criminal records? Uh, no. You're certain of that? Uh, as far as I know, they, they did not. These officers were hired um, uh, from three, I guess three to six years is what their tenure was. But um, I'm not certain that there were any uh, criminal charges on them. But uh, I don't, I don't want to say for sure. Uh, but as far as I know, they didn't. How's your department going to rebuild trust with the community in the wake of this? This is this is going to be this is going to be very difficult, you know, uh, for the police department. It's interesting that like even fucking mainstream media, which by the way, remember this is ABC News. Like these are these guys are not exactly anti-cop in any meaningful uh, sense of the word. They are the one. No, I don't think these are softball questions. No, he literally said why. Like they they're I think they're asking some serious fucking questions like they're not going to say a cab shit but like you know this is more aggressive line of questioning towards a police chief especially like a black female police chief too this is the type of shit that like lib media cares about they're asking like fairly I guess they're asking fairly hard questions it's surprising you know, I've always been a supporter of police reform and the tenets of 21st century policing. And uh, as we continue to... I mean, he's saying, how, how is your department going to win the trust of the people after this? Is like, that's not an easy fucking question. Uh, try to build trust with our community. This is a very, very uh, heavy cross to bear, not just for our department, but for departments around the country. Building trust is a day-by-day uh, interaction between every traffic stop, every encounter with the community. We all have to be responsible for that now, and it's going to be difficult in the days to come. Chief Davis, thanks for your time this morning. Thank yeah, Memphis does have one of the country's most liberal police departments, which is part of the reason why they're part of the reason why they're probably being like this harsh on it, or rather trying to understand where things went wrong. But you can't have a liberal police department. That's the point. Guys, guys, when people say they have one of the most liberal police departments, they mean like a civilian oversight board. They mean like, um, you know, 52% black police officer. Uh, uh, like the majority of the department is black. Cops look like the people that they're supposed to be protecting and serving, like liberal in that sense. Do you understand? That doesn't necessarily mean it's a positive thing. Like they did all the police, they did all the PR shit. They all, they followed through on all the PR guidelines. Do you get what I'm saying? To like, to be the, the department that is like a good department. Thank you. 
Also, the video is not even out yet, and no one is defending it. And the people that have seen it are defend uh, are saying this is indefensible. But leave it up to fucking Fox News, the Fox Five, to to hit that note, dude. Does it bother you? Something we don't have the not. cops of a perspective at all. I mean, it looks overwhelming. I get it. But don't we need both sides? Well, These I were think evidently that's... elite cops. These weren't just uh, fresh out of the academy. No, but they had a reputation They're... for being extremely aggressive. We're going to get uh, their body cam crime. video. We'll know they... what they said. And then they will also have their day in court when the case is. But they're out. also street crime. We're dealing with a different breed of cop. This is the cop who goes in the city. This is the cop who grabs the guns, the drugs. I mean, these are these are rougher cops, not in the sense that they're violating the law, but they are in. That's how you know, bro. That's how you know they're not they're not black. They're cops. OK, I know that them being black probably plays a role in like, uh, you know, the swift firing and shit. But like. They were not black when they were bludgeoning the shit out of fucking uh, uh, Tyree. They, they were not. They were cops, okay? So this is something that you need to fucking get through your goddamn head. They're cops. They are doing cop shit. When they, the moment that they stop a random black dude driving their fucking car for no reason... That's not, that's not, you're not doing that as like a black person. You're doing that as a cop. In the face of criminals every minute. Does it bother you? Something. We don't One of the things that must be stated about the kidnapping charge Sarah, when you all see this video, you're going to see Tyree Nichols is calling out for his mom. He calls out three times for his mother. His last words on this earth is mom, mom, mom. I mean, he's screaming for her. And when you think about that kidnapping charge, he said, I just want to go home. I mean, it's a traffic stop, for God's sake. A traffic stop. A simple traffic stop. Bro, people literally said this about the LAPD stopping that teacher who may or may not have been under the influence, which um, I'm not entirely uh, certain on that part. But regardless, like, people were literally like, he's he was obviously belligerent, which is why it was acceptable to kill him. It's like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? That's not how this shit works. In any, like, in any scenario, that's not how this shit works. There is no outcome. Stream reported? For what? Brother, y'all been fucking reporting this stream since I started talking about the cracker word earlier today, okay? Like, even the the incredibly liberal, uh, even the incredibly liberal-ass fucking uh, Nets DG has not uh, come through for you. Anytime, anytime you bring up shit that, like, these pathetic extremely online fucking losers care about they immediately hit the fucking band note like they are relentless dude <laughs> relentless i've gotten two markers already for nets dg it's crazy He's kidnapped for a simple traffic stop. Think about that. I mean, yeah, this is such an important case. Such an important case. And, and I continue to think about people like Terrence Crutcher and people who, for simple things, having car trouble. And they end up dead 
when they encounter the police. Corey Jones having car trouble when black people have simple encounters with police. They end up dead. We don't hear about these things with our white brothers and sisters. We don't see the videos of the police doing the most with white citizens when they're routine, simple matters. And that's why we got to continue to speak to this police culture in America. It does get emotional because I know what you're all about to see, America. And as much as those five officers killed Tyree Nichols, it was the police culture in America that right. killed Tyree Nichols. Hi, everyone. George. It's true. Um, here's the Tyree Nichols family holding a press conference uh, earlier. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. I just wanted to say that, as Mr. Crump just stated, I did push for murder one from the beginning. Mm -hmm. That was my main goal. But as the charges were told to us and they explained to us what the difference between murder one and murder two was, we're very satisfied with the charges. Um, more importantly, we want peace. We do not want any type of uproar. We do not want any type of disturbance. We want peaceful protests. That's what the family wants. Uh, that's what the community wants. Uh, they're all kind of, I got a text today from one of my supervisors about an alert. Uh, telling her, don't be in the crowds tonight. We shouldn't have that. We need to do this peacefully. Mm -hmm. uh, Bro, bosses are fucking texting their workers to not go out and protest police brutality? That's insane. Also... If this is an instance of like swift justice being enacted in so many instances where it never it never came, it's hard not to recognize that like the immediate fear from the city and business owners and capital owners in general, <clears throat> businesses closing early on this day, like don't you feel like that's part of the reason because they know that the inevitable is going to happen and that that fear is the reason why uh, the, the institutions are behaving the way that they're behaving now. Like, if you want to stop rioting, if you want to stop rioting, the most effective way to do it is by creating a system of accountability within policing that literally makes sure that you don't do this ever again, that this never happens again. That's it. People always fucking act like, oh, it's the rioters at fault. Is this at fault? Is that at fault? Oh, look, they're looting. Whatever the fuck. <clears throat> oh, man, like things are on fire. It's like, yeah, nobody wants that. But you know what else they don't want? You know what else people want less than that? Getting murdered by cops. So I think ultimately the best way to stop potential future rioting is by ensuring that there is a system of accountability where you work your way through the entirety of the police force and, and realign your structures to legitimately defend and serve the interests, protect and serve the interests of the people rather than capital. The family is very satisfied with the process, uh, with the police chief, the DA. Uh, they acted very, very quickly in this case. Yes. We are very, very pleased with that. Yes. Uh, other cases drag on, but this is a special case. Mm -hmm. We had a special son. Mm -hmm. yeah. That prompted the uh, quickness of this results. So. As of the Tyree Nichols family, please, please protest, but protest safely.
Thank you. Hello. Thank you all for coming and showing support for my family and my son. I really appreciate everything everyone is doing. My son is looking down, smiling because, you know, it's funny. He always said he was going to be famous one day. I didn't know this is how he was going to, this is what he meant. But if, I really don't know what else to say right now. I've said so many things in the last few days, and really I want to say I've never seen the video, but what I've heard is very horrific, very horrific. And any of you who have children, please don't let them see it. Um, I just want to ask for prayer for my family, for my, this whole community. And I want to say to the five police officers that murdered my son, you also disgraced your own family. But you know what? I'm going to pray for you and your families because at the end of the day, this shouldn't have happened. No, that's right. This just shouldn't have happened. And we want justice for my son. Justice for my son. Justice for Tyree. 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 I just want to thank everybody again for coming. I, I don't have it. I have a lot of words that I want to say, but they, they're just not coming out right. No, you're fine. And I still haven't had time to grieve yet. I'm, I'm still dealing with the death of my son. This is, this was not supposed to happen. My son was supposed to be with me today. I'm going to always know that I'll always be with him because I told everyone he has a tattoo of my name mm -hmm. on his arm. My son loved me to death, and I loved him to death. Yes. And so this is very difficult for me. I'm sorry if I'm not articulating myself a little bit better. No, you're doing fine. <laughs> No mother, no mother, no mother should go through what I'm going through right now. No mother to lose their child to the violent way that I lost my child. Thank you. Hi, everyone. The reason why... Um, the family is asking to ensure that like nothing terrible happens is because they know how the system works and they know that right wing media and other institutions that, uh, that defend, uh, white supremacist constructs will use, uh, the inevitable backlash, the understandable backlash that will occur against justice being served. But of course people will protest despite the the demands of the family. Because when a young black kid gets brutally murdered by police, the people that are out there protesting in the fucking streets see themselves as the victim. Like, it's not, it can happen to them. Or it can happen to a family member. It can happen to another loved one. They're not thinking about it like, uh, they're not thinking about it like a, a, another victim of police brutality that is like an individual 
uh, act of police brutality as like bad cops or bad apples. That's the reason why people will behave in the way that they're probably going to behave. We watched this yesterday. Um, I believe there was a... Yes, I will not be watching it on stream, obviously. And I know that everyone is going to... I know that, uh, you know, people are probably going to... Oh, here... In July 2018, outside of Sacramento, California, DMV office, I met Tyree Nichols. He had been waiting six plus hours in the miserable 98 degree heat. The story and those of others that day was the first of what would become 40 ish articles from me holding the California DMV accountable for their actions. Nichols unknowingly contributed to the setting in motion a series of stories that could better the lives of many Californians. This is, the, this is what I was looking for. Uh, I've been here since uh, 10 o'clock, well, 9.45, and the experience has been a very long wait. Uh, it's been very agonizing and very agitating waiting here and let, having everyone go in front of you, appointments, and you're here stuck. So that was my experience. It was a really bad one, actually. I haven't been here in five years, and this is probably the worst time ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's just, he's a chill dude. He's a chill-ass California skater dude, you know? I'm hoping this could bring comfort to those who knew him well or didn't know him at all, but Im are impacted by the situation in Memphis. I'll remember him as uh, an upbeat and remarkably patient young man despite ha navigating a difficult circumstance. May his memory be a blessing. Yeah, uh, cinemarxism is absolutely correct. Despite being uh, an anarchist, this is 100% correct, this take. This is something we could fund if we didn't give, like, 50% of our city budgets to murder people like them. Yeah. Every time your car drives over a fucking fat pothole, every time that you, uh, you, you look at, like, other cities that have public transit with longing, every time you look at, like, a European city and its, and its beautiful parks, remember that the reason why you can't have those nice things that we certainly have enough money to pay for is because all of that money is going to the cops. Straight up, that's just, that is literally true. That is absolutely 100% true. Bro, stop. Wait, what do you mean, bro, stop? It's 1 million percent true. And in many circumstances... In many circumstances, okay, uh, those cops aren't even fucking doing their jobs. Like, their clearance rates are dog shit. They're not exactly fucking, you know, uh, out there actually solving any meaningful crime. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the military-industrial complex coming home. Please stop the cringe. It's worse. It's way worse than you make it out to be. Wait, what? Matt Walsh uh, uh, responded to Jamel Hill, who said, I need so many people to understand this regarding Tyree Nichols. Bree Newsom Bass said, Diversifying the police force doesn't end racism because racism is inherent to the organization of the institution and its daily operation. Racism is what policing is, which is true. It's not theoretically what it's supposed to be, but historically and in contemporary society, that's what policing has been. From slave catchers, which is asset extraction, okay, all the way to uh, our modern-day contemporary police departments. Okay? Yeah. Police did not always exist. In the history of the United States of America, there originally were no police officers. There was no federalized uh, unit either. Okay? You either had posses, which, again, upholded uh, w or were formed 
specifically to to uh, engage in in slave catching or to enact white supremacist violence. Jamel Hill says, I need so many people to understand this regarding Tyree Nichols. Several of the, poli- several of the police officers who murdered Freddie Gray were black. The entire system of policing is based on white supremacist violence. We see people under the boot of oppression carry its water all the time. And Matt Walsh, of course, uh, with a brilliant take. The systemic racism superstition is unfalsifiable. Perhaps the reason why you find it to be unfalsifiable is because it's adic- it's accurate. And there's really nothing you can say about it. So you just say, it's too good of an argument, so it's not. it must not be true. If white people kill someone, it's white supremacist violence. If black people kill someone, it's white supremacist violence. Literally everything confirms Jamel's theory and nothing can ever disconfirm it. That's the scam. Now... Realize that uh, Mr. Black on Black Violence is not saying that this time. Notice how he's saying like, oh, well, it's black. if black people kill someone, why didn't he say black on black violence in this circumstance? Perhaps the reason why he didn't hit the regular black on black violence note that he normally would hit is because they're fucking cops. And he understands that when someone is a cop, it does not matter if they are black or white. Their job is Jamel Hill and Bree Newsom Bass correctly pointed out, is to uphold a system of white supremacy. They're cops. 